Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Aussie Endzone uh, podcast. And we are joined by our, one of our regular co-hosts, Brad. He is a mad Cowboys fan. And what a moment this would be for Brad, because we actually have a very special, special guest for the podcast today. And he played for the Dallas Cowboys from 03 to 05. His name is Torrin Tucker. Thank you very much for joining us today. And how was your day today? Oh, man, I'm having a wonderful day, man. Appreciate y'all guys having me on, man. Y'all have kind of made me international now, man. I kind of feel <laughs> special today. You know what I'm saying? That's it. He's, he's Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. International, baby. International, baby. <laughs> That's it. So, I mean, let's get started on your uh, journey of, of football and life. You were born in Meridian, Mississippi, if I'm if I'm not wrong. And what was it like growing up in Mississippi playing, you know, uh, junior football, high school football, all that sort of stuff? Well, I, uh, I, like you said, I grew up in uh, Meridian, Mississippi. I kind of grew up out in the country area, area called Why Not Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Ruffin from there, if I might add, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was um, it was a big uh, baseball community out this way um, okay. when I was growing up. And, you know, my dad real good at baseball. A lot of people good at ball in the area. And we grew up. And um, I went to Southeast Lauderdale High School, you know what I'm saying? It's a school in our area. And, you know, um, I had some great teammates I played with in high school. Um, a lot of great guys, you know what I'm saying? I, I got an opportunity to uh, get a scholarship at the University of Southern Miss. Yep. Play with play with a lot of great guys on that team. You know, we were pretty, we were pretty stout back then, man. Did you play any Anybody? different positions at South Mississippi oh, before oh, yeah. your main position? Um, When I was at Southern Miss, I played um, right and left guard. I was actually um, great. Number one guard in the country on some people's radar. Oh, wow. Around that time. But then when I went to the NFL, they moved me into left tackle. So I played, of, I played of, both tackles of, in the NFL. Okay. And out of right and left guard and right and left tackle, which position did you prefer yourself? Um, You know, like, like I said, you know, so I was always a big Cowboy fan. And, yep. and Larry Larry Allen was, <laughs> was like, you know, as I got big and fat, you know what I'm saying? It got to a point where I was stuck on the line. Mm-hmm. I, I I started like paying attention to the people that played that position. And um mm-hmm. Larry Allen was one of my favorites. Um I got the opportunity to play with him um my time in Dallas and that was pretty cool. And you know, when I went to Southern Miss, um my first coach I had was Peter Payro. And mm-hmm. um Coach Payro played in the NFL for a while. He was a good dude. You know what I'm saying? He introduced me to Willie Rolfe and, and Flozell Adams. And oh, wow. Just the, just the mentality of the game and how the game's supposed to be played. You know, just, you know, I was from a like a little small school, so mm. it was it was all new, man. It was a challenge. You know what I mean, man? I, I like that. You get brain on. You know what I'm saying? That's my mentality, <laughs> but uh, – but yeah, man, I, I I like I said, I got a chance and the opportunity to play, you know, Jeff Bauer and, and um uh Chris Kanakis later on and uh Coach Kick. There's a lot of great guys, man, that came out the university. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys like uh like Coach Taylor, Dwayne Taylor, Larry Edwards, and the late Mr. Mack, you know what I'm saying? Doing my coaches in high school, man. I learned a lot of life lessons through those mm-hmm. guys, you know, as far as like preparation and how to uh, approach the game, and then you know the rest of kind of, you know God, God kind of blessed me with it. Just just keep it in the road, son. You know don't mess it up too bad. You know, <laughs> and um, I think one of my favorite coaches probably um, I like I like I like I like playing for Bill. It was tough, but I like to plan for him. It always yeah. was. You knew where you stood. You yeah. understood uh, what your assignments were. And it was just up to you to get it done. If you didn't, he'd, he'd, find, he'd quickly find somebody else to put yeah. in your spot. But, <laughs> yep. you know what I'm saying? I, like, like I said, you know, I never I never took the game personal when it came mm. from a standpoint of somebody telling me what to do. But I, I took the game person, very personal mm. to the point, you know what I'm saying, where I was like, like really, 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 really angry. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so, so I took it personal from my standpoint. Yep. I never took it personal from when somebody was telling me what to do or yep. how to get it so, done. So, like, you, you were your own worst critic, you could say? Oh, yeah. I, w- I was 10 times harder on myself than any coach could be. Because, yep. you know, like, my, my daddy was hard on me. So, yeah, you know what I mean? My whole thing was just, like, you know, 
it could be worse. It ain't yeah. all bad. Mm. And I'm I'm happy to be I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It ain't all bad, and, and you know you always got tomorrow to make it better. Yeah, that's it. That's you know, absolutely so I it. Just, yeah. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the whole process, the ups and the downs with it. You know? <laughs> that's awesome. I'll pass it off to Brad to ask some questions about your time at the Cowboys. Go ahead. Yeah. Brad. Mm-hmm. Hey, th- thanks for talking with us, by the way. It's really a privilege and an honor to be able to, to talk to you. Hey, likewise, likewise, man. I, I just appreciate somebody who want to talk to me. This, <laughs> this <laughs> no. Hey, you know what I'm man? It's all good. I you love, love it. Love, love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm curious because because you said like you you were the the number one guard and all that. How big of a I'm a, I'm assuming you were you were a stud in high school, obviously. Well, you and, know what? I was kind of like that. I was that bubble guy, man. I'm gonna tell you who was the man on that team. Man, it was it was, it was a kid named Pete Malone and Johnny House. Man, Pete was Pete was fast and Johnny could do it all. Whatever he did, he was good at. It. I was just there. I was big. I made my plays, but I, I always felt like I could have been better if I, you know what I'm saying? I, I need to yeah. be better. I need to be better. Yeah. But um, even when I got to Southern Miss, man, shit, it was some, excuse my language. Um, <laughs> you're okay. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. But, you but, can swear all you want. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Well, man, when I first went to Southern Miss, man, it was it was a culture shock because I was always the, almost the biggest, if not the biggest person on the team in high yeah. school. And um, you know what I'm saying? We came from pretty good like football in our area. Like Deuce McAllister came out of our league and uh and uh Jason Campbell, they went on and went to the NFL. It was a lot of players that deserved the opportunity, but it was just information went as fast as it is now. Yeah. So it was, it was kinda it was it was kinda like if you got chose, you got chose for a reason yeah. and yeah. and you just tried to make the best of it. But man, it it, it was some talent in the state of Mississippi at that time. Yeah, and, uh, to go to Southern Miss and walk in that walk in that in that breakfast, and here come Adelia Thomas and and T.J. Slaughter and D- and John Nix and Daryl so Stewart and <laughs> Seth Scott and I'm like, oh shit, I don't know if I <laughs> I don't know if I was ready for all this. They as big as me and they fast, <laughs> so it was like it, it it was a it was a wake up call that no matter how good you think you are and mm, no matter how big better. you are. It's always somebody out there ready to test you, and you always got to, like, work on your craft to get better each day. You know what I mean? That was the biggest thing I learned from there. But as far as back to the question that you asked me, um, tackling guard. I like to play in tap. I like to play in guard because it was – it was I could be aggressive. Yeah. Okay. I could could pull around there and hit you up under your chin. I could cut your legs off and up (laughs) under. I could just pick you up and just throw you on your neck. I, I could, I could, like, I could, in my stands, my arms so long, I could reach across the bottom and palm your head like a basketball. <laughs> so, at guard, I could jump set you from guard and and not really have to work that hard because I got people on both sides. Yep. yep. But as soon as I got, as soon as I got to the, um, tackle was a little different. Yeah. More on the edge. More on the edge, and you gotta set the um, you gotta set the you gotta set the pocket, you gotta set the width mm-hmm. of the pocket from the tackle. So you yeah. can't open up too fast that you get a two way goal, and you gotta kind of keep your shoulder square, so you can kind of set the the width of the park pocket at guard and center. You kind of set the depth of the pocket, so the yeah. so the quarterback comfortable in front of, him and you keep the width at the tackle. So yeah. like the biggest thing I had to learn how to do at tackle was not be so aggressive. Yeah. So I like to, I like to get you and yeah. do what I want to do with. You. I get my hands on you. I felt like it was over with. That quick <laughs> you, hand, you know. What when I'm you saying? were in college, when you were in college, when did you realize? Ah, uh, you know what? I think I got a shot at this. Of, of was it your first year starting in college? Was it your senior um, year? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you when I kind of realized I could possibly be a player in this game. And um, I was at we we was having a um. We was having a spring day, hmm. and this was before my dad passed away. He came to the game, and it, it was this one play. And I was on the back side. I was on the left side of the ball. I was on the back side, and I had to cut off Deroy Stewart. Deroy Stewart, 317 pounds, 4740. And I got to cut him off, and I'm on the back side, and he in a one-tick, and I got to oh. get my head across him. 
And I like ain't no, I like ain't no Andy Hell. I'm gonna get my head across. And he beat me on that play. And I had a decent day, but for the most part, I took my lumps. It was, you know, mm -hmm. I'm getting used to the game, the speed of the game, the size, the physicality of it. And I was talking to my dad, and he like, I like, what you think? He like, you did all right, but it seemed like certain times you, you get in your head that somebody can beat you. Mm -hmm. And if you ever let it get in your head that somebody can beat you, they always beat you. And I thought about it, and he called out that particular play. And I knew what, what my mind frame was at that point. At that point, I was like, I ain't gonna never, I ain't gonna never let nobody beat me. They gonna have to earn it if they do. And that was kind it. of my mentality. And when my dad passed away, I became like the meanest man you ever want to meet. Yeah. Yeah. And I just took it all, I bought it up, and I took it to the football field. And, oh, damn. And after a while, they got to talking about I was pretty pretty good. I got to talk <laughs> about I was pretty good. So I was like, after a while, they started talking to me. I was like, well, dang, you know, maybe I got an opportunity to take it to the next level. Let me just, you know, not 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 make a mistake. <laughs> Running yeah, off the road, doing something stupid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's awesome. So, so yeah. then... You, you said, obviously, there was a jump when you went into from high school to college and that type of thing. Mm. What kind of what kind of jump was it from going to the college to the pros? <laughs> then it goes listen, from listen, family man, to, listen, man. to business. It's, it's, like, it's like going it's like going from first, first gear to second gear, second gear to third gear, third yeah. gear to fourth, and then going into overdrive. When yeah. you get to the NFL, it's like it's like going in the, it's like going in the fifth gear. Everything's fast, everybody big, everybody strong, everybody's pretty much an all-American or or some kind of some kind of um award winner in their conference. Or they wouldn't be there. But yeah. everybody getting paid. So it's your job to like not be, you know, so not be the one to, <laughs> to get sent home <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so like like the, the biggest thing with the NFL, it was it was more, it was wasn't no school anymore. So now everything, the school was your job. You had yeah. to learn your, your protections. You had to learn how to like, like take care of your body. You had to learn how to keep yourself healthy when you was hurt, how, you know, when to back off. It was yep. a science to it. You know, you had to study the film. You had so many plays to learn, so many defenses to learn. Mm -hmm. And that, that change, it might change, one play might change five different variations. Depending mm. on how the defense moves, and then training camp is a little bit more strict than when you plan a team during the season. So you got that whole book, and you got to learn all five of them variations instead of the game plan. Yeah. So it's, it's it, it, it takes a lot of mental preparation, and if you're on top of it mentally and physically, you can you can be a pretty good good player. You know. Yeah. I got to yeah. see. I got to see. I got to see some of the best do it. That was all right, but it, it was some it was some great guys around me. Did you see guys that like maybe had the physical tools to, but they just didn't have the mental ability to process that, and and then they couldn't make it? Yeah, well, a lot of times, it like people tend to. I'm a big believer on people tend to like learn and do better at things that they like to do yeah. versus mm -hmm. things that they're, they're made to do. Yeah. So it, it's not a lack of of them understanding or knowing. It's just the little things like you might not feel the way the coach feel about your playing time, or you might feel that you're a little better here or there. And then mentally it gets you off your game. And when you're, or they're not throwing you the ball enough so you can get in your rhythm. Yeah. A lot of times certain guys are rhythm guys. It take, it take repetition to get them wound up to the point where they can really like get their skills. And some of them can just show up and, and be like, oh my goodness, where he come from? <laughs> and, and you know what I mean? It's a, and then when you that guy that's kind of in between, the one that it take a little bit to warm up and you got to be prepared. You got to be on point because if, if you're not, there's somebody else there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. As you said earlier, <laughs> if you can't do it, the coach will find someone who can. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, 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 yeah. Like like Bill, the game get too big for you. You can just 
you know, you come over here and sit down by me. I get somebody to go get you a hot dog, and, <laughs> and I make sure they won't get you. The game get too uh, big for you. You know, uh, you just, just go sit down. And Brad, as a, as a gridiron coach in Australia, um, because FYI, Brad coaches football here in Australia. Coaches, okay. in, well, not this year, but he coached the last eight years. I'm led to believe. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, um, and then in the states a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. while he was in okay. Australia, he, he was the coach of a team called the University of Adelaide Hogs, who went on to win eight years in a row in their competition so okay. brad i've got a question for you um re-coaching um mm. do you have any um you know critiques or anything that you'd like you know to talk about with um torren you know as, as a coach's standpoint like as in to get in the mindset of a player because you've been a coach mm. Mm. sort of thing well i just i, I was just gonna say in in your context did you play better when you got pissed off it sounds like you did i always ask players that i i, I did but like sometimes you have to you have to kind of um you have to kind of learn the, um you have to kind of learn how you coach yeah how you coach I, I learned how to adjust to my coach a lot okay but sometimes when it just got like like at southern miss i think coach bio did a great job of harnessing it because, you know what I'm saying, I had a lot of things going on. You know, my daddy was my dude. And, you know, my mama was great, too. But my daddy was my boy. You know what I'm saying? So when my daddy passed away, I just kind of – I became angry. I internalized, and I took it to the football field. Yeah. The a best lot place of to be I, able to get it out for you is to take yeah, it out on the field. Yeah. It was a great – it was a great – it was a great stress reliever. And and over the process, it gave me a reputation of being like – like a, having <laughs> anger issues. And it cost okay. me in the draft. Yeah. So after that, it kind of taught me a lesson that, you know I mean, at some point you have to find a happy medium with everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even though I want no problem out the field, it's just sometimes your reputation will uh, become your reality if you're not careful. Yeah. And um, But in the same sense, I play, I play with an edge. I like to play with – I think everybody should play with an edge. I think if yeah. you're a good football player, every football player that's, that's got any kind of worth about them has some kind of pride <clears throat> about them that they just weren't going – let nobody push them across a certain line. Yeah. And yeah. once and once you got once you got to that line, you start setting that line with everything in life, mm. with business, with friendships, with relationships and everything. So if you don't have no standard, I call it a standard. You know what I'm saying? You don't have yeah. no standard about how you approach a situation, then you'll never, you'll never really be able to like a sin to where you probably could become. And yeah. then if you don't, you know, as long as you put your effort into it and know you did your best, and, and you know, sometimes you can you can move on better than you can, you can if you, you can know. You quite proud of what you achieved. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Talk to me about your uh, relationships with the quarterbacks. Like, Great how important oh, man. is is that? Because you had you had Quincy Carter your first year, didn't you? Oh yeah, Quincy, my man. I talk to Quincy all the time. Great guy, man. Quincy, Quincy was a great dude, man. Um, you know, you know, a lot of times when you when you be in there, you be so focused on what you have going on, you might not really necessarily understand everything everybody else have going on. Mm. And uh, Quincy was a real strong guy. He was always there for everybody, but I don't think he allowed at that time everybody to be there for him like they mm. could have. Mm -hmm. And and we didn't really understand, but he was always there, man. He's still always there. I talk to him all the time, man. He's, he's a great guy, man. Um, That's awesome. Helping kids. He coached kids of phenomenal talent. But it was a lot of guys on that team, man. I, I enjoyed playing with Tester Verde, man. He was a great guy, man. Like, Tester, Tester Verde, my boy, man. He's a, yeah, man. He's, he's, he's like playing with a legend, man. I got to, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I look at it, you know. You have your own personal goals, and sometimes you meet some of them, and sometimes you don't get the mm -hmm. opportunity to get, get to them all. But it ain't it ain't all bad. Like mm -hmm. like my boy Scott, they say, it ain't all bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was it. there. Some people don't even get the opportunity to be there. No, yeah. it's like that, that over, over over the time, you know, I just had to transition to to take the good with the bad, and mm -hmm. and understand that you know what I mean without injuries and other little things that 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 hinder you. You know what I mean? Who knows what it could have been? But well, I was decent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you you <laughs> started you know in the NFL, man. You were more than decent. Like, mate, yeah, like, man, you, was, you've listen, started man. more. What you've you've started you've started more games than I ever will, and it, and that's yeah. one. 
<laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You've you done you know, so man. much. I was also going to say, just tangenting away from the Cowboys for a quick minute. Um, you've mm. also played for the Florida Tuskers and the Sacramento Mountain Lions. What was it like playing oh, for yeah. those teams? Oh man, listen, listen, man. It, it was a that was an experience, man. I met a lot of great guys that yep. you know what I'm saying. They were top of the line. We played in the NFL and we were trying to get back in. It was a lot of young, hungry guys. Man, it was it was it was cool, man. I got a chance to play with um um uh, Jay Gruden really? as a head coach. Yeah, he, he, we we were pretty good, man. We lost the um who did we lose to? Was it Jim Foster, I think? Um I think we wound up losing in the championship game to Vegas. But hey, you got yeah. to the championship game though. Like... Yeah, we got to the championship game, and and um, my boy Jeremy Parquet that I played with at Southern Miss, he was on the team, man. Oh wow, he, he like a temp- yeah, he like a championship man, man. He won one on every level, so you know oh. what I'm saying. We wind up meeting each other at the at the championship, and uh, when when we were playing uh, my second year when we was with the Mountain Lions with uh, Coach Green, I got the opportunity to play for him. Mm-hmm. That was an honor. You know what I mean? Like I said, I got a chance to be a lot around a lot of great minds mm. that was that was at the in the game at that time, from mm-hmm. like Sean Payton to uh the late uh uh Tony Sperano. Mm-hmm. He was my old line coach for a while. He also coached tight ends with us in Dallas. Um shit, Todd Haley, he wound up becoming the head coach. Uh, Mo Cotton, he was a good dude. I like Mo. Mm-hmm. He, I learned a lot from him. Um there was a lot of people that had Joe Jurassic. He was a great strength coach. He was good. He was instrumental in me having a lot of success. It was a lot of people. Coach Parcells, a lot of I, I appreciate the process. It wasn't mm. it wasn't easy, mm. but I appreciate it. And I understand ain't nothing, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing like worth having, not it's not easy. worth working for. Yeah, that's so, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I just took it as a part of the job. And yeah. you know what I mean? It was it was it was I was living my dream, man. That was my favorite team. <laughs> when I was three, I said I was gonna play for the Cowboys. I thought and I was gonna did. be Dorset, but I wound up being like uh, <laughs> Eric Williams or Larry Allen. You know, what I'm saying not as good, but quite close. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, you, you got to live out your dream plan for the Cowboys. Sorry, Brad, you were gonna ask yeah. something there. I think. Yeah, no, I was gonna ask you. Like, so Larry Allen's kind of the the epitome of you know the interior lineman and just an absolute yeah. Player. What was it like playing with him? Was he was he as freakish in the practice field as, as- man? Listen, man, man. La La was a man. You know, what I'm saying he- it's just like you know, what I mean, he couldn't do nothing wrong for me. So you know, yeah. what I'm saying. But for the most part, man, like to see him in the weight room to be as successful as he as he has been in the league at that time when I came yeah. in. Yeah. To be coming off the injury that he had came off of, and to like get back on top of his game and go to the Pro Bowl and hit it 43 times at that age, man, it's amazing. Wow. Like, yeah, you know, you know, I learned a lot. When I got the opportunity to play with him my last year, mm. you know what I'm saying, play beside him when Flozell got hurt. Yeah. Um, another one of my guys, you know what I'm saying. Um, he um, – I learned a lot about the game, like just little small things. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I never tell it on him, but, like, I appreciate yeah. that because it, it made the game a little simpler to me and it, yeah. and it made it make sense a little bit more. Yeah. Um, you know, I also played with old Andre Gerard. That's my boy, too. He's a pretty good guy. You know what I'm saying? But, so, you know what I mean? We had a pretty decent little line. A lot of those guys were real smart about the about the game. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and and we had great coaches to sit down and bounce it out for, like Warhop, George Warhop. I got the opportunity to be a mirror. Be a mirror one of the best to ever do it. You know what I'm saying? I was just I was just happy to be there in the room with some of them guys. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, wow. Oh. So tangenting back into the Cowboys as we as we just were. Um, <clears throat> obviously the 2021-22 season is now over with the Rams winning the Super Bowl. Uh, big shout out to the Rams firstly. Congratulations oh, yeah. on them winning the Super Bowl. Um, oh, yeah. But let's do a, I mean, I, I won't talk because I'm a Packers fan, but I'll get you two to discuss a little bit of a, a Cowboys 2021-22 season recap or review. We'll get Brad to lead okay. it. So Brad, we'll start with you and, you know, topics and whatnot for a, a Cowboys season review. Yeah. Mm, okay, so, okay. Okay. So do you do you Torrance? <clears throat> excuse me. Do you follow the the Cowboys still? I'm curious. Do you follow the NFL? Oh yeah. Uh, every year, man. Listen, that's my team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, listen, that's my team, man. I've been I've been <laughs> following the Cowboys since I was old enough to understand what it was. That's correct. But 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 yeah, it was exciting <laughs> to watch some guys this year. You know what I mean? I think they um they they making steps in the right direction. Um. Okay. 
despite a few injuries in certain places. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. I just think I think they're getting better. They just gotta like mentally, they gotta stay together because you know, being a cowboy, everything comes at you. The media, the, the fans, the, the opposing fans. Yep. And you get everybody, you get everybody the best game because everybody wanna beat the cowboy. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, 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 you know what I'm saying? Just get ready for it. You go there, you be ready for it. And, you know, there's only a certain type of people can take it. You know what I'm saying? Only tough people can take that. Yeah. You know what absolutely. I'm saying? So, absolutely. Yeah, so so do, you, do you think they're legit uh, Super Bowl contenders or? Yeah, like like right now, I think they I think they legit. They just got a like a couple spots. They need to um they need to have they tools on the line just as good as they want. Mm. You don't need a fall off. You don't need a I think we had a better one two punch on our offensive line as far as if somebody went down, we, we really didn't go go down that bad, but yeah. we went down a little bit. But like it's a big fall off from when one of those linemen go down. Yeah. It's a big fallout from the ones and twos. It's like, like, damn, how you even now? You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. don't knock on them. They don't yeah. play bad all the time, but when it counts, that's that's the game, you know what I'm saying, that they really depending on you to like step up on. They expect yeah. you to do yeah. good on the on the games that that they don't expect, you know. Not no knock on no player, because anybody can have a day. Yeah. But like certain guys, they just don't feel like supposed to beat you if they putting you out there. And some guys they know you finna have a day. You know what I'm saying? So, and what are your thoughts on Dak's season, uh, post season now? Well, I, I, I think I think Dak played good. I just think Dak needs to like be Dak, like uh, yeah. use that big arm when you when you feel it breaking down. Don't be scared to get get out of there. Get out of there. Get down. You know, get what you can and get down. Control the game and like don't be afraid to stretch the field more. Like yeah. you got to stretch the field a little bit more. Make them like. I, I think they don't attack. I, I hate to say it that they, that they don't, but I think they should attack the defense more because they got some nice receivers. They mm-hmm. got they got great tight ends. I, I like their tight ends. The line good, but I think they need to like sure up the line a little bit. Um, the running game, I think Zeke was a little banged up this year, but he played tough. Yeah, I, I like the way he played. Hurt that, yeah. that says a lot about him to be making that type of money and to put it on the line for the team. I, I, I can appreciate that. Um, do you, do you think I, the game, do you think the game has changed much from when oh, you yeah. played to now? Oh, oh yeah. It's a lot less physical. Yeah. Just looking at the game, you know what I'm saying? You know, just from my perspective, just looking at it, it's look like it, it, it's more left to right than it is north before it go north and south. Now when okay. we were playing, yeah. it like the game was more north and south. It was more, one step north, you know what I'm saying? Now it's like a couple steps and then go, go north, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it, it kind of take a little bit of the impact off some of the guys on the inside, but in the same sense, it, it allows the athletes to be athletes and, and let the big man kind of show their thing a little bit to move their feet, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> they get to move their feet a little bit. They can, they can show they can dance a little bit. <laughs> but like, I think, I, I, think I, think, was, I, I think it was earlier this season, early, I think it was like maybe – week eight or week nine there was a it was big boy season there was a i can't remember the player and i i think it was the dolphins actually but mate he was easily a guard or something he was on the offense but he definitely was not a registered receiver he ran oh like, yeah do you remember that play i think it was yeah, like yeah. and he oh. tried to dive and put that thing in there too <laughs> right he tried like, to jump in and put that thing in there oh wasn't that amazing like you, you just you yeah, feel for it. you cool. love it you love to see it yeah, that was pretty cool, man. You know, big man, that's a big man dream to get the ball in the game and, uh, right? and run was, off. But, yeah, that was pretty oh, cool, man. It was amazing, except it didn't count because it wasn't a registered um, yeah, yeah, receiver. It did count, but, oh, yeah. it's like you can't take Legal it away tech. from him that he did it technically, you know? That'll oh, always... yeah, that was pretty cool. He, he looked pretty good running that thing, too, man. He gave a couple He did, he did a couple of jukes and stuff, yeah. Yeah. He tried to drop his shoulder, but that, that DB got up under him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he tried to jump on. <laughs> he tried yeah. to get him some. He tried to get him some of that zone, man. He tried to get in that zone. What? Who? Tell but, me. Yeah, who man. Was... I, think, I think the I think the biggest difference between like us and them is like I think linemen when they're not they use their hands mm. a lot more from a striking okay. position. Yeah, like on, a lot of guys catch. I think the I think they catch when they get ready to like sit on the ends too much. And it okay. and it makes the pocket soft on the edge, but 
You know what I mean? The game that changed them boys big and fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes you have to adjust with time. So, you know, from my standpoint, I was all, I always like to shoot my hand, try to okay. stop that run. If I can get him to stop his feet, that was going to give me enough time to gather myself and, and get back in balance. Yeah. I thought, I, something, you know, like, you know, I, I watched the game, um, like, like in the Super Bowl, man, that, well, Aaron Donald, man, you got to get on that guy. That guy right there so dang on strong and, and got such a good center of balance. You got to get on him fast. You can't let him get into you before, you know what I'm saying, you sitting back, popping in your chest, you're going to push in the quarterback. Yeah. So you got to, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's all about mastering your, your body position and being able to, like, stop momentum and, and be able to direct it in, a, in the opposite direction on which way, way they're trying to go. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, that makes me want to ask you, did you study the opponent as much as you study oh. the playbook? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I watched them a little bit, but I didn't want to watch them too much because I can get overconfident and okay. start like, I, I'll be wanting to like predict what move they finna do before they do it and put myself in a bad spot. Yeah. So I like to watch them enough to know what they like to do and how they go about doing it. I kind of count their steps a little bit, but you can kind of tell by their feet okay. how many steps they're going to have to take before they can come inside. Okay. Um, you know what I'm saying? Based off the line, sometimes you can tell the twist coming to you. or You yeah. know what I'm saying? Whether the slide going away or coming to you, you can kind of be a little bit more aggressive or less aggressive towards how you go about your stance or your set. Mm -hmm. So it was, like, it was like putting those components, those tools together to kind of like, make you more successful at different scenarios in the game on mm. certain plays as far as like when the when the when the protection is sliding away or you got help or you by yourself and you gotta protect both sides of yourself inside and out. It's a it's a lot of little nuances that you learn over time, but it you know it's it's, it's the game. Yeah. <laughs> who, was the, who was the the best player you've ever played with? The best player I ever played with? Yeah. Ooh. Offense or defense? You choose. Yeah. Okay. Um. Ooh. Man. I say, I, I tell you this, the best player I played with in high school, I'd probably say uh, Pete Malone. Mm -hmm. The best player I played in with college would probably be um, – Oh, he had some dogs on that team. I'd probably say uh Daya Thomas. A D yeah. Day Thomas. Uh he was he was a fucking excuse my language. Nah, you're, fine. you're fine. <laughs> yeah, right. Um in the NFL, offensive line, man. You know I gotta go with my boy Big Homie, Larry Allen, man. Yes. man nobody else. You know I gotta go with Big Homie, but like to see. With my own two eyes, I seen I seen a lot on that field, but like like Sean Taylor was something special. Just to see how fast he could like go from one side of the field to the other. Okay. I, I would have liked to see, I would have liked to got the opportunity to see how his career would have turned out yeah. without that that mm -hmm. BS. You know what I'm saying? But um yeah, you know, but it. man, it was some it was some people out there, man. Um and a follow-up question. Who was the best player you played against? Well, oh. I played against some. I played against some good guys, man. The, um, I probably say uh, Strahan was the strongest guy I ever played against. Was he? Mike, Mike Strahan was real yeah. strong. He he was strong and he was fast enough to kind of beat. You. He fast enough to beat you around the edge, and he's strong enough to like Push go from speed to power. Go from speed to power and get you moving and run you over. <laughs> so he, yeah. He, he, yeah, he he was he was he was a guy that you had to kind of play like more Smart. into yourself, and yeah, 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 you had to play more in control. Now, like a guy like Javon Curse and um, Darren Howard, and um, Darren Howard was a was a low. He pretty good player, mm -hmm. but I have to say uh, that Osi, the Yosi Young Merle, yeah, he was, he was bad. yeah. I, don't, I hope I don't say his name right. Osi was pretty good. Really? Playing against that giant team, it was it was a, it was a tough game playing against them. 
And okay. Curse was pretty good. They and were which, fast. And which team, speaking of, because you said it was a tough time going up against them, what team did you love going up against because you just love bashing them? Like, you knew, like, basically, like you'd playing, circle it I on like the calendar. I like playing all them chumps. I like playing all them chumps, man. Yep. I like playing all them chumps, man. I felt like if they lined up, man, we were going to kick their damn ass. Every time we lined up, I always liked me. Every time we came in town, I liked who we were with. I liked them, I, I liked them my line I was with in high school. I like that my line I was with in, in, in college. I love my line I was with in college. And and I love that line I played with in Dallas. I think you prefer you know playing saying? away or at home? It, it didn't, um, I like playing at home, but I, I didn't mind playing away. It, it was cool sometimes. It, it was cool in the NFL. Did you, you get have a room, did you ever have like roommates when you went on away games? Oh, yeah. Who was your favorite uh, uh, to have as a roommate? I only had one. It was Andre Gerard and then um, and Anthony Davis was my other one. Anthony yep. Davis, man, Anthony Davis was cool, and Andre Gerard. And then, like, when I first got to Dallas as a rookie, uh, Rashad Lee, all them good, them my friends, all them my boys. <laughs> all, we all cool. If I, if I stay with you, man, we cool, man, because I'm, I'm, I'm a lot of fun. I'm like, we're going to laugh and have a good time. That's and who was awesome. the funniest teammate? The funniest teammate. Yeah. All right. Y'all, y'all remember the uh, Under Armour commercial? Yeah, I do. Protect your house, died, Eric Abagu. Okay. Eric Abagu. Really? He's pretty, he's pretty funny. Yeah, he used to have me going all the time. He used to. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty good, though. He always kept something going. He was a lot of fun. Um, uh, Roy Williams was a lot of fun. We always really? had something going. Yeah, Roy Williams. Yeah, man, you had to watch Roy, man. He, he a prankster, man. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, man. He was, he was a good dude, man. It's some characters in that. It's some characters in that locker room, man. So it's like it, all them guys are pretty good. They catch you catch the right day, man. You might get it from anybody, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you is, might get. Is it. there any memorable pranks that you can uh, that is safe for podcast air? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, now when we was in when we was in Dallas, you ever seen the special? On, uh, you ever seen a uh, hair bake when Potter be slapping be slapping the women? You know, mm-hmm. like yeah, give, yeah. give him the title. So we went we went around the facility in 04 and we had the powder war. And we were, we were slappy, we catch it with the baby powder from you know lifting weights and stuff, and we were slapped on the face. <laughs> and like, what my bitches we slap the face, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, we me, me and Andre Duran had got Roy uh got Roy Williams and he went up on top of the uh he went up on top of the locker. And he got a bucket, and he filled it with water and powder, and he just turned no. the bucket over on top of me and Andre Duran while we were sitting there. <laughs> and it went up all that stuff, man. That made me so mad. I was mad at him, but I couldn't get mad at him. We kind of started. You were like, well played, got, but we, I'm mad. <laughs> yeah, we got in trouble about that. One. That was kind of that was kind of the point that end the powder wars, man. But we were like me and him, Darren Bond, we go around, you know. <laughs> Oh, catnip, man. We were, uh, yeah, man. We were, <laughs> we were wicked, man. Right? Wow. Yeah, Darren Barr is a good dude, man. And what's this, thinking about memories such as that, what is your favorite memory of your time in the NFL? Um, I think my favorite memory was um actually getting the opportunity to just like um. Uh, I think all of them were special to me, man. I can't really just pick one because um Okay, well what was it like I mean? the week of getting your first start when you're told, yep, I'm you're starting this week, sort of thing. What did that feel like? Oh, that was pretty cool. That, that was pretty cool because uh my stoop, man. I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I gotta be ready, man. They they, yeah. they gonna call on, they're gonna put the man in the game. I gotta be ready, baby. Yeah. They'll, they'll put booby in. You want to win? You got to put booby in, man. Let me go do my thing, man. So I was ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I think my first game, I did pretty good, man. They, um, yeah, they put me in their own peppers, man. He, he pretty good. He pretty good. You had player, to go up against Julius Peppers. Oh, yeah, man. For about three oh, quarters, your man. first game. In his first game as yeah, well. Yeah, man. Wow. Uh, it, was, it was like, I'm kind of like, when, when we first got in there, uh, Ryan Young had. It kind of was going through some knee issues, so all the young tackles on the right side got an opportunity to play. Okay. Uh, me, Kurt Bowlers, um, Javier Collins, and uh, they drafted Jacob Rogers one year, and he kind of was in there for a minute before he kind of ran out of gas. But um, mm-hmm. but for the most part, um, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? We we kind of like, if he started the game, I kind of like, he goes a series or two, and then I had to go in and 
it's hard going in the game in the second quarter and Julius Pepper been running around for like 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you, been, yeah. you ain't stressing, you ain't stressed since the beginning of the game. And they like, Tucker, get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, by the way, Julius been running around for 15 minutes. You come get you go in there and stop it. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of oh, like wow. one of them things, man. So, I love it. so it was cool, man. It, it, was, it was cool, man. I enjoyed it. Like um, I played against him for three quarters. I, I got the game ball that game. Quincy oh, got wow. the game ball. Next week we played um Miami. Yep. And and Ricky Williams showed up with and, and it, he had an orange cape on. <laughs> <laughs> That round had 234 yards on Thanksgiving. It was on Thanksgiving too, man. It was wow. Oh man, Ricky came back, man. Ricky showed his butt, man. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, you know, oh. you know, it was two it was two Rickies, man. We had we got ready to go into the game that week, and, and Bill showed us a film. He like, all right, guys, it's 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 two, you know, it's two Ricky Williams now. We got this guy right here, and and the dude swung at his leg and he fumbled the ball and fell down in the backfield. <laughs> and then it was another clip that they sent, they showed where he had the whole field to go and he went and put his head in somebody's chest and ran him over and walked oh. in the end zone. Yeah. So it was, it was two Ricky Williams that you was meeting on the field, it depending on how his mind was. And that <laughs> day we ran into Super Ricky. He had an orange oh. cape on. <laughs> oh, that's and he hard. had a game that day, boy. Woo. I got to ask you, so the only player that is, or the only person that is, can be somewhat larger than the Cowboys is Jerry Jones himself. What what, yeah. what was it like being, I'm assuming you were around him. Did you see him much? Did you interact oh, with man, him? Oh, man, Jerry was cool, man. You, you know what I'm saying? No, you, no, Jerry, man, Jerry the man, man. You, you smell Jerry before you see him, man. Like, <laughs> man, it's, a, it's a money round, man. What, what that is? Like, oh, shit, he called Jerry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Jerry was cool, man. You know, he always was I'm I'm a, like I think he get a bad rep about, you know uh-huh. what I'm saying, being controlling. But like um maybe it was different because we had Bill as a coach, but um hmm. but Jerry Jerry was encouraging, you know what I'm saying? If if, if he had to get on your butt, he'd get on your butt. But like okay. for the most part, he would tell you, I like what you're doing, you know, he encouraged you, you know what I'm saying, to keep yeah. like practicing hard and stuff. Okay. And um it was a great experience, man. He always had his door open, you know, to to the players. It wasn't never like no bad. He wasn't never no bad guy. You know what I'm saying? They always treated you. They treated you like you were them. You know what I mean? That's all you can ask for. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's awesome, man. Any more questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just want to know, you know, what what are you doing now? Are you are you around the game? Are you? Uh, <laughs> Right now, man, I be I be kind of I kind of have my hand in a little bit of everything. Like I okay. um I volunteer coach at my old high school at Southeast for a couple of years till my uh, friend passed away. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. to a car accident. Um, I um I train kids. Um, yeah. I kind of for 15 years I was dealing with AAU basketball with my friend Lawrence Johns, and he passed away not too long ago. So I've been kind of like uh revamping everything with the uh, 501 c3 to try to get it going um try to get it back going but we had we had some pros come out of our little, little camp but we had like over 100 kids we sent to college man i'm oh, kind of wow. proud of that that's, that's and, amazing uh, and, and right now i'm kind of kind of dabbling in in like my little hobby of music a little bit man nice. you know what, I'm saying? What, what do you do you sing do you rap uh instruments what do you do no i'm, I'm kind of like i'm i'm kind of um I'm kind of like a, a a mascot. I'm kind of like the mascot. Yeah. I don't yeah. really do. I can do a little bit of something. Like I can I can record a little bit. I kind of halfway make a beat, but I ain't really good at it because I was always focused on football. Yeah. But yeah. I got some friends and um and I've been doing with Mr. Servo and stuff and um you know we got some we got some pretty good little music man that's gonna come out pretty soon. No, Guys, oh, check awesome. it out. Man. Got well, some absolutely, professors. I was going to say when that drops, send us the links and we'll put it onto the onto the socials for you. Okay, man. I tell you what, man. I get my boys make y'all a um, make y'all a theme song or something, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, put it up, hey, man. We'd love that, absolutely. I, I will okay. not say no, and I know Brad won't say no to that. Can, Brad, absolutely. Okay. When when we when all right, we man. I get my boys. I get my boys to put something on that, but man, I just been uh, being honest with you, man. I just been. Uh, I just been trying to find my next football. I ain't really, yeah. um, you know. What I mean, I ain't. It don't take a whole lot for me. I'm um, 
you know, I went back to school and stuff and, and, you know, I got my degree, but I'm just trying to find something that's going to catch my interest and try to help, help yeah. other people reach their dream. Like I, I deal with a lot of kids. They just call me and they be wanting help with different little things. And I just try to help them out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't always need no money or no, no, no influence or nothing. They, they can say what they want to say about me. <laughs> but if you know me, you love me. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm good. I'm yeah. good to people that are good to me. And if you make me mad, I can not be that guy that they, uh, <laughs> you yep. know what I'm saying, they yep. talk about, yep. but I try not to, you know, I try to well, do the right I, thing. I was going to say, when you were talking about that, uh, like about 20 minutes ago, I was just like, hang on, we're talking to a different Torrin Tucker right now. He's not yeah. Mr. Angry sort of thing. Listen, <laughs> man, listen, man, I'm going to tell you something. My mentality was when I, I don't know if y'all, see, I, I grown up, like, I ain't really have much to do out in the woods. Mm-hmm. So I always had these old NFL films, and I watched this film one time. You'd be in the dorm room late at night, and they talking about Greg Lord. They talking about how Greg Lord was mad when the dad passed away, and I was kind of going through it. And I was in the room that night, and I just got mad, and I just made my mind. And I said, you know what? My daddy can't watch me play ball no more. I'm going to embarrass everybody that step out there on the fucking field. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. That's what I tried to do. And I got real dominant at it, but – it kind of got to a point where the the um, the reputation that I created for myself kind of overshadowed who I was. You no, know, if if they was they felt like they couldn't control me or whatever the case may be, yeah. then they just yeah. avoided the situation. They never really got an opportunity or even tried to get to know me. And I ain't I I ain't care if they tried to get to know me or not. Yeah. As long as somebody gave me a chance, mm-hmm. I just gave them. I tried to get them one hundred and fifty percent of everything I had. Yeah. Until they didn't want me around no more, and then and and I'm just as happy to be there as I am not be there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't take it no, no way. You know what I'm saying? I just enjoyed the time I was there. The people were good to me. You know what I'm saying? The NFL still been good to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't perfect, but it ain't all bad. So, yeah. you know, what I'm saying? I just take the good with the bad. It could be worse. You know what I'm saying? I could be working. 15 hours a day. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I do what I want to do right now. I'm blessed. Um, like right now, I'll just be trying to like get my injuries and stuff and try to be better, better me every day. And if, if anybody need my help or assistance and I can do it, you know what I'm saying? I do what I can. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How's we your health? Out. Yeah. How's your health in the sense of, you know, because I'm assuming <laughs> football takes a toll on you physically. Yeah. Like, like most of the time I have, um, I have I have headaches at times. Sometimes you get to a point where you know you, you get sensitive to like you kind of go through a gambit of it. Like if if your head hurting, your back might feel good and your legs might be feeling good. You might want to go run today, but yeah. then your head hurting and you can't deal with the you can't deal with the glow of the pounding from the joint. Yeah. Um, I have um, you know, what I'm saying my I got some herniating and and buds and discs and stuff, and they kind of like flare up from time to time. Yeah, I'm like. Right now, I'm just I'm just working on better ways of, um, you know, what I'm saying without killing myself every day. I'm yep. trying to work on better ways of uh, getting my weight down and being healthy, creating a more healthy lifestyle. Yeah, from eating standpoint, I take my vitamins and stuff, man. I just, um, you know, what I mean, yeah. I just take it how it comes. But I, you know, I, I hurt every day. Yeah, but it, you know, what I mean, if, if I were working, if I were working for twenty years. I probably still be hurting every day at the age I am. So, so you know what I'm saying. And, and I just don't. I just try to make it better and do the best I can, man. And and, yeah. and try to better myself every day. I read a lot and I, I support people that support me. You know what I'm saying. So that, that's great. And <laughs> I think to wrap this up, because we've spoken about a plethora of things, the start of your career, and you know, which started more or less at high school and college. Um, what advice would you give to any youngsters who are either in the high school stage or the freshman year of college football who have dreams and aspirations to make the NFL? Mm. Well, well, the thing the thing I say is always believe in yourself, but understand that now you know once you got to college, it became a little bit more serious. But now it's serious from the time you step on the field all the way through because they're giving contracts out to kids coming straight out of high school right now with the NIL deals. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if I was a parent and I had a kid that was pretty good at sports, I would start I would start understanding financial literacy. So 
when mm-hmm. I got to a point of getting to a contract or some money, I'll be able to protect my wealth and it can't be st- stole away by the sharks that's out there. Yeah. Then then I will also brand it. I w- I would come up with a brand, a brand them and and, and create a um like OBJ. Why type had, why, thing. Yeah, like 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 LBJ, pretty much. I would brand them all the way up and I'll push it without violating NCAA rules mm. as close as I can get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> close as I can get it without violating rules and, and, and I would like I would just you know what I'm saying I would try to eliminate a lot of the mistakes that I made from just not knowing you know what I'm saying the information just not being available it's just just if you want to do something research it and practice it every day and, mm-hmm. and understand that you're going to fail at what you're trying to do more than you're going to succeed oh, but once you succeed once you succeed you can you can thank you failing, but you can still be succeeding at the same time. You just have to like not trick yourself to think that you're not doing what you're actually doing. Yeah, I think that's the biggest part of it, not mm-hmm. tricking yourself out of your opportunity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well said. I think a lot of people trick themselves out the opportunity. You know. Is there any last questions that you have for Torrent, Brad? No, I just I just want to say again, it's it's been a real privilege and an honor to it to be really able to talk. Oh yeah, man. Uh, 